to introduce myself. Uh, Esim Asumi, my, my real first name is Esfandiar. But that it intimidates people, so I've, I've gone by Essi since childhood. Uh, I'm at Emory University, uh, economics department. Um, and uh, I went to school in London uh, and have been, have served at many universities in the U.S., starting with the University of Southern California many, many, many years ago. So that's, it's kind of challenging because I'm an economist, um, um, but I do a lot of econometrics. And for most people, there is a lot of a specialization. I've uh, not quite done that. So uh, I very broadly, I work on measurement and inference in econometric uh, side of my work and inequality, mobility, multidimensional well-being, uh, and, and that kind of topic, welfare theory uh, on the economic side. And the two come together because I, I treat the economics questions as statistically. So in econometrics is mostly um, uncertain models. Uh, uh, models are abstractions, like impressionist paintings, and there is some complex reality and how to make inferences and what are the objects that are legitimately discoverable statistically is what I, what I work on. Primarily, uh, I use a lot of information theory. This is, this is from communications. Coding theory tends to have a lot of uh, good similarities and parallels with what we do in econometrics. Um, in the uh, set of economics topics, uh, it's, it's really quite a bit of focus on, on measurement. So when we say uh, uh, well-being, what do we mean by that? Economists typically jump to measuring it by income. And the idea is in many other societies, other things matter to different degrees. And, and so health, education, access to clean water, things like that. Mm -hmm. And it's fundamentally a matter of aggregation, challenge of aggregation. How do you put apples and oranges? You know, how many dollars for one upgrade in health status kind of thing? So many years of work on that kind of multidimensional well-being and its implications for expanded notions of inequality what does that mean? What do we mean by mobility? Mobility in what? That sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So very broadly, uh, that's the division between econometrics and economics mm -hmm. topics that I work on. For instance, at, uh, uh, with this visit to the center, I talked about measuring the gender gap. Um, typically, that, that means in a narrow sense, what is the difference between wages of uh, women and men, uh, and the um, first, what the what does the gap mean? We've, we've heard in the news that uh, the average woman gets seventy-three cents for every dollar. Uh, that's uh, that's a very technical. Um, uh, but little analyzed way of looking at the gap is, is for the average person. Most of the interesting stuff happens at different parts of the distribution, not, not at the, the average. So what happens for high earners, low earners, ethnicities, uh, locations, neighborhoods, and so on. Um, so for that, I use methods that are inspired by information theory so instead of uh, saying all women can be characterized by one index, I look at the entire distribution of their outcomes, and the same thing for men. And that's the main uh, theme of my research in both of those, those areas, is how do you measure distinction between two entire distributions of outcomes rather than some index like the, like the average pay. And that's so challenging both intellectually and mathematically. 
I use entropies to do that, and entropies come from information theory. Uh, during the war, Shannon formalized this way of how do you send a message encrypted, and the other guy discovers what you sent with minimal effort and, and in an accurate way. Those tend, tend to be actually useful for looking at the distinction between groups of women and groups of men. And policy becomes an issue. So you have to get into why, what you can attribute those distances to, gaps to. And so we look at counterfactuals, a new, relatively new area in, in economics to try to figure out what would be the distribution of wages for women were they to be given the attributes of men. Something you will never observe, but incredibly we can create it statistically, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And what if they both had the same skill levels and the same attributes, age, location, and so on, but the market treated differently, the so structural effects. That's sometimes referred to as discrimination. Mm -hmm. So that's an example of the type of interest uh, in terms of um, characterizing a distribution of outcomes for one group, comparing it with another group, using both econometrics and economic concepts. In, in the pure econometric, um, this might be interesting to younger uh, researchers. I'm not going back to what I did in my PhD, uh, but on certain models. In the, in the big data field, that we are all being impacted by. You know, you, you, you start typing something on your phone, it completes it for you. Or you look at uh, buying something for the next five days, you're bombarded by ads and you wonder how the heck did they know I was interested. So all these big data methods are about guessing, predicting things without really knowing the phenomenon. Economists want to find out mechanism because that lets you make policy decisions. This, this big data effort is to be really good at predicting, even if you don't, you don't, you can't quite tell how. And that's ironically what I did 30, 40 years ago in my PhD, the methodology of it. And it's coming back. So what I'm excited about these days is what's known as uh, model averaging. And the slant in it is is peculiar to me. I want to average a, a whole bunch of models, all of which are false. And so it raises interesting intellectual questions. What, what is it the object that you're discovering in those circumstances? So that's what's exciting me. And it's quite a bit of it is not my field. There's a lot of uh, work from other areas.